Hey everyone, so in our previous episode of this modern kitchen renovation series, I walked through uh, the process of scanning and importing your scan of your existing conditions and we started modeling it. Uh, we got to about walls and now we're gonna jump in and we're going to continue. This is gonna be a little bit longer than the last episode because there are some funny little details that um, I wanted to leave in all the unique quirky model things that happen because I think it'd be valuable to anyone who's doing the same thing as this. And so you're going to see some wild uh, arc ceilings and some interesting little details. And so if you enjoyed this series, feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. And yeah, with that, I'm going to jump right into episode two of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. So we're just gonna jump right into Revit and uh, pretty much pick up where, where we left off. So what you'll see here is I'm in Revit and I'm placing some interior elevations. If you remember from the last episode, uh, what I mentioned um, was that you're gonna be creating a lot of views, uh, a lot of uh, sections, elevations, floor plans, different views. And all I'm doing here is I'm creating some interior elevations and you'll notice I'm modifying, um, well, that was just modifying a wall there, uh, but uh, but I'm actually going to modify the view extents uh, quite a bit. Um, and part of the reason for that is um, when it comes to point clouds, not only do you want to pay attention to your views, but the view extents of how many points you see beyond it. And now I'm just placing um, um, doors in. So what you'll see here is I'm, I'm going through, um, I'm just placing some stock families that I have in my template, and then I'm modifying the sizes based on what I dimension in my elevation. So this is a nice sliding door. I'm placing in there, I'm editing and duplicating the family type, and I'm changing the size uh, to what size is actually in the existing building. And you'll see right here, I'm actually dimensioning the, the scan um, so that I can modify my family and create an existing door family that fits essentially exactly to what the existing condition is. Um, for those of you who haven't gone through this process, um, you know that it's not much different than um, if you're doing it with a tape measure um, in the sense that uh, you would just be going through your sketch and modifying. But um, this is nice because you have the families pre-built in the template um, and, uh, and then you can modify them to fit. And you see, I'm just kind of nudging them around right now. Um, with point clouds, again, um, it can be a little, a little bit of, of, of assuming. Um, what I usually do is um, I will sometimes, depending on if it's a critical wall um, or if I know um, it's a critical location, I will, um, I will actually take the tape measure out and I will measure those those areas or the laser laser distance measure. But here we go. So we have our door in and you can see now I'm just flipping between different views. Now I'm going to place a few of these windows in. These are just simple picture windows. Um, so I'll start with a, a picture window. Um, you'll see me flip between um, Polycam um, and and Revit quite a bit because um, Polycam kind of becomes my my existing photos. And here I am just placing a picture window in and again, just dimensioning the scan um, and then modifying my window families to to uh, to match the scan. And so just going through, I will let you guys know that um, I recorded my entire process here as I was working on it. And um, so some of it I narrated as I recorded, but some of it I did not. And so you will see some things that seem a little sped up. And that's because obviously this was a long um, you know, a long process and I wanted to try and speed up some of the more repetitive things while I talked through them. And so what you see is I'm just going around and I'm really just just modifying and placing these windows um, based on these views and these elevations. And then I'm dimensioning, I'm placing, I'm dimensioning, I'm checking, I'm going back and forth and just sort of building this, 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 um, this kitchen and this house um, slowly but surely uh, using these, these properties. Um, the interesting thing here is um, Obviously, head heights usually are consistent. Um, this existing condition had, this is actually something that the owner, Mark, um, was absolutely um, horrified by, which is these these three windows. Um, one of them was existing uh, in the 1950 um, 50 or so house, um, and the other two were added. And you'll notice that the head heights of these two little <laughs> windows on the side are um, are actually off by a couple inches and they they actually look the the one in the middle i think was the one that was added actually um it looks directly into a column uh, a colonnade sort of on the exterior so these windows were going no matter what but um for the sake of demo drawings and understanding existing conditions um, i made sure that i modeled them and so again just going through placing the existing windows modifying the sizes going back to polycam it becomes kind of my 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 uh, existing condition document as i flip through and then i'm just working my way around the walls um, um and placing placing the openings for example that was a rectangular wall opening um, placing the the windows the doors and and sort of 
um, just massaging the model as I go around. And you'll notice, I mean, just, just look how many different, different views I'm going through. I've got a, a 3D view here with a section box that I'm just sort of spinning up and down. I'm moving the section box to see different cut planes. Um, I'm going to place place a couple doors in here, modify the swing angle so it looks, looks nice and planned uh, for the existing and demo drawings. And then again, just going to the 3D view, going to the plan view, going to polycam. I mean, you get the idea here. It's just a lot of back and forth between uh, the information you have. Um, again, the, the nice part about it, and I mean, you can see what I'm looking at here. Um, there, there's a lot of angles. There's a lot of interesting little details. And so this is this would be a very challenging project to to um, uh, dimension and, and and measure in the field, um, and then come back and draw. Um, imagine all these triangles and distances having to actually get them using a tape. And so um, this is a no brainer as to why um, this process has worked well for me. So now again, just just uh, going beyond the extents a little bit, checking out this cor corridor, this hallway where the where the mud room, I'm sorry, where the powder room is and just modifying some of the to meet to meet those scans, basically. So now I'm going to start looking a little bit at the at the soffit details um, and and some of the interesting, interesting little things happening there. Um, you'll see um, I'm taking a dimension to see. Uh, actually, this is a reference plane um, and then I'm dimensioning it and then I'm kind of uh, massaging it based on, um, you know, it not being six foot 11 and and some crazy 256 of an inch dimension. Uh, and and the, the soffit was actually at seven feet. And so I just use that reference plane as my guide. Um, and then you can see it's actually not seven feet. It's a little different. Um, this is an area where maybe it makes sense to to shoot. I usually do shoot a, a floor to ceiling um, as a tester, uh, just with my laser tape. Um, and then sometimes I'll, do, I'll hit a couple soffits. And again, that takes 30 seconds in the field, not even um, just to verify a couple things. But um, especially with point clouds, you have to sort of justify and and, and um, make some assumptions based on where, where those points are. So all I'm doing here now is just creating a reflected ceiling plan um, and, and setting my view ranges so that I can see exactly what I need to see. Um, and you can see um, I'm cutting and looking up. Um, and then I also, I'm modifying my my extents um, so that I can see the the point cloud a specific way. And this is what I'm talking about again when you're working with point clouds. Um, you know, making sure that your view ranges, not just where you're cutting a section or a floor plan or an RCP, um, it's also the distance that you're seeing. Um, because sometimes uh, seeing too far, uh, putting it to unlimited right away, for example, um, you know, it may actually make it harder for you to model from this point cloud. You see what I did there is I just copied the wall over, which was already a soffit wall at the right height. Um, this way the angle was matched and I didn't have to worry about it. Um, and then I can start looking at um, the, the details along it. You'll notice I'm jumping into one of my more detailed scans so I can start looking at the actual soffit and realizing that, hey, this thing actually does kink out, um, which is kind of interesting. And this was a condition where I actually uh, went back to some photos. You know, was this soffit uh, kinking uh, the way the way it shows? And as you can see, here's a perfect photo of it. There is a kink right there. <laughs> so so it does kink out and it wasn't something that's wrong with my scan. Um, so here I am splitting the wall and actually sliding it over and making it uh, match that kink. So uh, all this is coming down and getting demoed, um, but you never know. And, and, and you know, the information you have, you might as well just plug it in there. So this is the entire house basically has this this interesting ceiling. Um, and I remember when I was doing the master bedroom for for this uh, client. Um, I actually did it without um, a laser scan and trying to get this curved angled um, ceiling detail um, uh, was extremely challenging. Um, uh, so here at least now I can cut a section and look at it and now it's just a matter of, okay, how do I wanna model it? You know, how do I wanna model this drywall ceiling that's following these, these rafters and then kinking down and following another raf rafter? Um, what's the best bet? So what I ended up doing is actually using a roof by extrusion. Um, and part of that was because I, I did not want it to be um, an in-place um, an in-place uh, component. Um, and uh, I knew I wanted the shape to be continuous and then I wanted to just be able to use openings instead of voids um, to, to, to slice and dice it if I needed to. So what I'm hearing, what I'm doing here is actually doing um, making a new type. Um, even though it is a roof, I'm calling it a ceiling. I'm giving it the same, um, the correct materiality. I'm giving it the correct structure um, and I'm just using it as a, uh, as a ceiling. Um, I've mentioned this in multiple videos. There's no reason why you can't use it as a ceiling other than the fact that um, Autodesk decided to only give you this option to create <laughs> uh, in specific categories. And so I like the the, the uh, roof by extrusion, because then you just draw that profile and it's gonna extrude it um, and then carry the, the structure up or down depending on what you're doing there. Um, so you can see here, I'm just putting some drywall in um, and then I'm gonna put the structure in, <clears throat> uh, which is gonna be our, our two, by, two by eight, I think is the existing walls. 
So placing the drywall on the finished layer in the core boundary, I'm going to use my structural um, framing, so dimensional lumber. I want to take a quick moment to thank our sponsor of this series. So all these episodes uh, are proudly sponsored by RevitFamily.biz. Uh, RevitFamily.biz is a company that creates um, residential Revit family libraries from doors to windows to cabinets and more. Brenton Weiberg is the owner and uh, author of most of the models. Uh, some of you may remember him from a few different episodes. He's actually been on BIM After Dark Live three times. And uh, not only has he sponsored this episode and this series, um, he also offered you, the audience, 20% off any of his families. Um, as you see this series grow, you'll see I actually do use his families quite a bit, including the cabinet families, and I'm going to dig into them. But uh, feel free to jump on over to his website, check out the clip that I'm going to show in a minute, and use uh, 2022 Revit Kid as a promo code to save 20% off. And I believe the the joists uh, having gone in the attic were two by sixes. And so here we go. So now it's as simple as drawing a shape that follows that um, that <laughs> that crazy curve arc thing that you're seeing there. Um, you can see here I'm just sort of following it down, getting as close as I can. And then I'm going to trim the edges using TR on my keyboard or the arc arc connection there. And then I'm I'm simplifying the the trim there. So. Uh, and from there now, um, it's as simple as you draw the shape following the section profile that you have. And then when you click finish, you'll see it's actually going to create the structured, the thick structured object. Um, although, as you can see here, <laughs> uh, because it's a roof, it, it goes down as opposed to up with it. And so uh, I kind of had to modify um, and, and uh, offset my extrusion um, to make this more accurate. So I just ended up uh, editing the profile um, and then offsetting by the thickness of my of my structure. And you can see there. And then if I click finish, now you can see my drywall is going to be exactly where it, where it needed to be. So if I go to 3D and I modify my section cut, of course, it goes in the wrong direction. I'm just going to pull it for, for this. Um, and you can see here I am pulling this profile through. I'll use align on my keyboard. AL is the is the sh shortcut, and I'll align that edge. And then here's here's another little interesting detail um, in which um, it obviously goes into the soffit, um, and then it kind of gets sliced and diced and, and and meets with the soffit. So this is one where I wanted to keep this in the video because I do think this is something that maybe you're not creating a roof of this shape, but you probably will run into some of the uh, troubleshooting things that I did here. So uh, my thought was let me use a vertical opening um, to to slice where the where the soffit exists. And so that's what I'm doing here is just using a vertical opening. So instead of a, a void, it's an opening that um, will always slice through that object, which is very nice. I'm just following the shape of the soffit. So it slices a hole where the soffit is. This roof detail does continue throughout the building, even though we're not um, gonna be going beyond that point. And you can see I'm just kind of following, it might be hard to tell, but the magenta lines are just kind of following um, the, the soffit outline. So then, um, you know, the, the roof won't, well, or the ceiling, I should say, <laughs> won't uh, won't um, interject with the soffit. Of course, I missed some some trimming here. TR on my keyboard for trim. Uh, I'm sure everyone everyone who makes a sketch in Revit misses misses some trims every once in a while. And now you'll, what you'll see is that it made a hole in my in my shape, which is pretty cool. And so again, this is the reason why I like doing this instead of an in place component, is that now it's a component that has a, a built in sort of void that moves with it and, and is hosted to it. Um, and it has information identity, it has work plane, it's just a much cleaner way to do it, in my opinion. And so now if, if I cut a section this way, you'll start seeing that um, um, it actually is starting to look just like the scan. So wild ceiling, I can see, I, I know that. And that now the, the real challenge comes into play, which is now we've got this soffit here. And what does it look like when it interacts with, with the ceiling at the low end? Um, so I'm just kind of uh, checking out different areas of the soffit, seeing how it works out. And I'm going to go back to my scans and back to my photos and back to my existing information um, to, to start exploring how this integration of the ceiling and the soffit. I want to just let you know that I know this is pretty deep into the details. Um, and I, I thought about cutting some of this out, but I think um, and hopefully I'm right. So uh, comment below and let me know what you think. I wanted to keep this in because I know that this is real. This is this is what it's like building a Revit model. 
um, uh, and so I didn't want to leave this out. Um, so what you're seeing here is is me building my soffit right now, um, and uh, and you know this is just a flat soffit as you saw from the photos. I'm going to set the height to what it needs to be, and of course it's it's too high. It's a, probably just a defaulted setting. Um, so now I can either move it down um, or I can align it uh, depending on what I want to do. And so I'm just going to move it down to, I think it was six foot eleven was the uh, was the was the the face of the soffit. Um, we don't have to talk too much about this detail right now. I'm sure everyone <laughs> everyone has a, a, a thought on this, but remember this is existing conditions that that is getting um, demoed um, pretty much uh, right away. Um, so uh, so I'm not going to focus too hard on how the ceiling and the the soffit um, sort of interact and what you should do with that offset. But this is the condition that I really want to focus on. Um, so that 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 curved ceiling actually um, continues through what you'll see in the photo. See that? Um, so the soffit doesn't actually slice there. Um, so what I needed to do here is just modify my 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 void, which is actually my vertical opening. I needed to modify it um, to meet uh, to meet that one point where the angle the angled ceiling meets the flat ceiling. Um, and I, I left this part in because what you'll see is um, this is a common challenge with with um, when you use vertical openings or, or openings in floors and ceilings. Um, I go to the sketch and I have a brain fart where um, I can't find the sketch. And so what you'll see here is I'm, I'm going to tab through um, and, I, and I just can't figure out how to select or find that opening. And so uh, for those of you who uh, who have gone through this problem, um, um, you probably are like, oh, I know exactly what the issue is. Um, but what you'll see here is I'm tabbing, I'm tabbing, I'm tabbing. And I'm like, why? Why can't I find this vertical opening so I can modify its sketch? Well, what you forget about when you're doing openings, whether it's a vertical opening, whether it's a, um, a floor opening, whether it's a, a, a shaft opening, you know, whatever. Um, what, what you forget about is um, even though the sketch is, is hosted to the object, so to speak, um, the the actual or the object is hosted to the object whatever uh, the the actual sketch um, starts on a work plane and so my work plane that I started sketching on um, was below my section cut um, and so I was not seeing the the work plane and so um, what you'll see is is me sort of trying to figure that out um, having a brain fart because this has happened to me before um, and just really look I'm selecting I'm looking for I'm looking for openings vertical openings shafts I mean I'm just looking for all kinds of stuff I'm like why the hell can't I select this thing and modify it um, and you'll notice my section box is actually cutting up uh, at the bottom it's like our RCP view so I'm not seeing my level one um, floor so guess what? I'm not selecting my vertical opening sketch. So look at me. I'm highlighting. I'm isolating. I mean, <laughs> driving myself nuts with this brain fart, trying to find this vertical opening to modify it. Um, sure enough, uh, it's down there on level one. And so um, as I as I get through it, I, I realized, oh, well, if I select this um, roof and I click vertical opening, it actually modifies the sketch. And there it is down there. And then I just change the work plane of it back to level uh, roof or ceiling, I forgot what you it was, so I can see the sketch. So um, lesson learned there for everybody is um, you either have to see the sketch in the level that you're on, or um, if you select the object, the roof or the, in this case, um, you can actually modify the opening uh, in the tab, in, in the in the um, in the ribbon. So <laughs> that's what you're seeing there. And then you'll notice what I end up doing is is I'm going to make this sketch move up uh, and, and change its work plane. So I go to I go to set and I modify its work plane so that uh, the pink magenta lines are actually closer to what work plane they are. And this is where it's kind of confusing, right? Because it's a it, it, it's based on whatever work plane the object was created on and so on and so forth. So I hope that was valuable to you guys um, because I know um, as you can see I, I had a big brain fart there um, and and a and then worked through it. And so hopefully now when you run into that little brain fart, um, you don't have to work through it the way I did. So now I'm just modifying it um, and pulling it back until it meets the area exactly like the scan was. And there it is. So now this looks pretty much uh, just like just like the scan. So here we are. We've got our ceilings in now. We've got our windows. We got our doors. Um, we're going to wrap up our existing uh, conditions model in the next episode. Uh, we're going to finish um, some of the interior details, and then we're going to jump outside and we're going to finish some of the exterior details, like the actual roof, the overhangs. There's a deck that attaches to it, and a few other things. So we're finally going to wrap that up in the next episode, and then the following episode, we are are actually going to start designing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed um, some of the level of detail we dove into. Feel free to comment below um, uh, and let me know what you think. And uh, I look forward to uh, uh, releasing the next episode for y'all. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So for that, uh, see you later.